Good morning, Chris Lee and Blake Lovell here at Southeastern 14, here to talk about the SEC and the NCAA tournament on Wednesday night. Blake, two teams in the SEC played last night in the NCAA tournament. Uh, how did that go? Um, you mean three teams? We sure about that? Oh, I know where you're, I know where you're going with that. I mean, one play, they just didn't win. Um, Hold on. There's, there's, there's only one may, way for me to do this segment. So give me a minute. Uh, there you go. There you go. Let's, um, listen, if you weren't on the live stream last night, this is basically what we did last night on the live stream. So you, this is why you should join in on the live streams because you don't get this kind of content anywhere else. And Gabe... I don't remember who else. All these guys were just throwing Chris. By the way, in case you forgot, Chris picked Kentucky to win the national championship. Um, I did not. So, therefore, we have implemented the rule here that Chris must wear this it's the for at least the, next, at least the next seven videos is what I would propose. But, Gabe, if any or anyone else who wants to weigh in on that, um, I think that is kind of the, the punishment here. So... Haven't I been punished enough? Yeah. All right. All right. You can go ahead, Chris. It's okay. No, I'm I'm gonna um, I'm gonna wear this as long as Kentucky is the topic. Because I've well, in that case, I guess I can I can let this thing roll for a bit. I can uh, I can really milk this one. So it's hard to breathe in here. All right. Go on. It's fine. Uh, no, we, go we ahead. Go it. ahead. Gabe's gonna appreciate this. Look, Kentucky did not play well, and again. We, we went over this in our live stream last night. I know a lot of people, it was probably half and half. You know, we had a lot of people in the live stream, but there may have been some people who did not see it. Well, we talked about it. Kentucky did not play well. Their half-court offense, as Chris told me last night, he, he uh, gave me praise for, you know, I didn't certainly didn't think St. Peter's was going to beat Kentucky, but um, I did say I was a little concerned about Kentucky's offense right now, and well, their offense, they get the free throw line 35 times. And I did say in the live stream, too, that I texted Chris and had some choice words about Kentucky's offense early in the game. And I basically said, hey, if they don't shoot 30-something free throws, they're not even going to be in this game at all. And, well, they shot 35, and they still didn't win. But Kentucky fans really got all the emotions out last night because it was just – I don't even know what to tell you. The offense wasn't good. The defense wasn't good. That was the bigger thing. Um, St. Peter scored their highest point total of the season against a Division One opponent. And remember, this was an offensive team that was not very, not very efficient this year. Uh, and we mentioned that in the preview. This was a team that was all about the, their defense, and yet they came out and just consistently scored against Kentucky. Uh, I'm just going to keep dragging this along here, probably for another 15 or so, just so Chris can continue his ways there but next time i have to cut the eye holes bigger yeah i was gonna say that's um i'm not sure you can see anything right now but uh that's you all right tilt it um, at just the right angle yeah well listen i i mean it was just look it's one of the biggest upsets in tournament history and for those who picked kentucky to win the national championship which by the way i did not chris i think did from what i recall um <laughs> I want to keep bringing that up. Um, no, but look, it was not that not that far fetched. Chris, not the only one that picked Kentucky to win it all. And yeah, I, if you're a Kentucky fan, I, you have every look. We had some frustrated fans in the chat. Guess what? You have every reason to be frustrated. That shouldn't have happened. They didn't play well, and to me, they look like the team that just they were on their heels all night. Uh, aside from Oscar Shibway making some plays, trying to put them on his back. Kentucky never put them away, and that's what you cannot do this time of year. You cannot let a team that has no pressure at all and whatsoever that's just coming in trying to shock the world, you cannot give them any sort of any sort of opening to just come in with all this confidence, and that was Kentucky's thing. They never put them away. So, um, all right, now, Chris, I'd like to go into the breakdown for each individual Kentucky player that stepped on the floor. I'd like to break down each minute that they had on the floor. Well, let, let me uh, let me give you a breakdown here that'll that'll sum it up. Um, like when Oscar Sheboy wasn't shooting, Kentucky was 15 of 45. And Xavier Wheeler, who was one of two guys on the team that actually wanted any part of last night, 
was minus 15. Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, you know, I it just was not, uh, yeah, one of the biggest upsets in the history of the tournament. There's no other way to put it. Um, you know, it's just, it was not, I mean, it was not, yeah. I Listen, man, I, I told you, I don't remember when we talked, but I said they are not winning this game. You could just tell. All the momentum was on St. Peter. Even when Kentucky took a four-point lead late, six-point lead, I think it was 68-62, then maybe 75-71, something like that. I sat there and thought, I still don't feel like they're going to win this game. And sure enough, each time Kentucky would kind of push it out a little bit, then St. Peter's would hit a big shot, and Kentucky just could not. They just, offensively, that team was just broken in terms of half court offense. Like again, it, they they get the free throw line 35 times. That was really their only path I thought to even having a shot at winning this game. That, and that, like they had a 20 a plus seat. free throw edge until Kentucky had to foul at the end. Yeah. St. Peter's best player, KC and Defo played hey, 24 minutes and 45 seconds out of 45 played. minutes. Yeah. I mean, it, it's I know. it's 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 unfathomable. Well, I mean, I know there's a lot of people who are getting some enjoyment out of this, not just uh, Chris wearing the bag over his head, but this may be something we need to do in every video moving forward. Perhaps the bag, there are going to be some people that, shame. Perhaps there's going to be some people that vote for this, would like to see you wear this all the time. Um, <laughs> it, it could improve I, I don't show know. quality. Uh, we'll see. But, yeah, bad loss for Kentucky. Again, if you want more of our thoughts on Kentucky, um, you watched the live stream from last night because we really – we pretty much spent the entire, well, not the entire live stream, but a pretty good chunk of it reacting to this game right after it happened. So you're going to get our real sort of reaction there. Um, but, but yeah, that's that's to sum it up. And look, if you're if you're watching our video, you already know what happened. You watched how it unfolded, and I'm sure you've seen all the reaction. So, um, yeah. So there you go. There are other teams all right, to Chris. talk about, right? Go ahead. Now, now you can take the bag off because now we got oh, now we got wow. a team to talk about that, quite frankly, looked pretty good. Looked national championship good on Thursday, and we all know who that is. That's that's yeah. Tennessee. Um, Tennessee looked. Look, we said in our preview, we said, hey, if you're trying to, you know, if you're looking for those upsets, right? We always looking for upsets in the bracket. We did not say pick St. Peter's, but. We did say, if you're looking for upsets, I can tell you one place not to look, and that yeah. is at Longwood, because this was a terrible matchup. We said it from the start. This was a team that just was not in a position to be able to handle what Tennessee does, and what does Tennessee do with it right now? They come out and knock down threes. That is what this team has been doing, and I, I, there, I mean, realistically, I know Baylor beat whoever by 30-something, too. North Carolina was dominant against Marquette. Kansas, I know, played well against Texas Southern, but there was no team on Thursday that impressed me more than Tennessee. Yeah, Carolina might be the exception. But, I mean, Tennessee never trailed in this game, led 54-29 to at half. I mean, took took its foot off the gas almost the entire second half and still won by what, 28 – no, I'm sorry, 32 points? Could have won by 50. Yes, yes, could have won by 50. That's not an exaggeration. Well, and, and part of it, Longwood first appearance in the tournament, you just never know how that's going to go. And the way Tennessee's defending, we just – we didn't think it was going to be a game, and it wasn't. Yeah, I, I think it was more to me just their offense is just – Yeah, th see, that's the thing. that The defense has been there all year. Yeah. Now they're just starting to get answers so many places – on yeah. offense. I mean, let's see what. Five guys score double figures. Um, I mean, it's, it's just – Tennessee, the script has been the same for, what, two months now almost? Although the offense has gotten better, I think, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, as I said, their offense is as smooth right now as it's been all season, and that's that's a dangerous thing for opponents. Um, look, to me, it is. It's the three-point shot. Like, I, I keep going back to it. They go 14-24 and 24 in that game from three. And now, if you look back at it, I mean, look at statistically how well they're shooting the ball. They're now up to 44th nationally shooting, 36.5%. But really, 
a lot of that I think is built in kind of in a, I don't know, kind of an early December stretch where they didn't shoot it well. But since then, I mean, let's think about this. Their last five games, they shot at least 40% or, or better from three. They've made 12, 8, 6, 12, 14. I mean, they are just, they are on a roll right now from the three-point line. So, um, yeah, I, I just, you know, we'll talk about the Michigan game. We'll do our video on that. But I tell you, I I got a hard time picking anybody to beat Tennessee right now. They they look fantastic. I know it was Longwood, but that they looked fantastic in this game. So. The madness has officially begun. It's time for you to shoot your shot and score big on the nonstop action with my bookie. It doesn't matter whether you're filling out multiple brackets, betting the national championship win, or simply looking for player and game props. My bookie has you covered. Sign up today at my bookie. Use promo code Southeastern to secure a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. It's simple. Put in $200 and play with $300. Just use promo code Southeastern to claim your bonus. College ball, NBA, UFC, no matter the sport, no matter the minute, my bookie puts action in your hands with live in-game betting. And with choices from thousands of lines and odds, you can turn any game, any day into payday. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Arkansas. Arkansas also won last night. The, the Arkansas did win, and that game was almost exactly what we expected. I mean, we well, said mo- just, mostly we didn't expect JD Note to not score for twenty minutes or whatever that was. But other than that, yeah, yeah. But I mean, again, this is another one where we said coming in, this is not a bad Vermont team. We mentioned it. I think you know, looked at the comparisons. Everybody was doing the same thing they did last year saying, well, this is Colgate all over again. But we said, look, Vermont's better than Colgate. I, I think this Vermont team was better than that Colgate team last year. And, you know, we kind of saw that here. It's just a team that's, I mean, really very disciplined, right? And that's what we said. I mean, you talk about a clean, clean game. You don't see a lot of games played where teams combine for 11 turnovers, especially at this this setting, right, where it's the NCAA tournament, all, all the pressure, and yet these two teams only turn it over, again, a combined 11 times. So, I mean, that was, you know, something that we said. I mean, that's what Vermont does. They are, they're very efficient with their offense. They're going to get a lot of open shots just by virtue of working for those shots. And they made Arkansas work. But, you know, still, it's just we've talked about all year with Arkansas is you know, they basically have gotten it down to about six guys that they play. And I know Chris Likes only played, what, he didn't play a few minutes. He just kind of gave some, some spots. Six here, minutes and 19 lot. seconds. So, you know, but but you knew who they were rolling with. And I thought, you know, Davis was the one to me that just uh, they had to have that from him in this game. I mean, you're talking about someone who, as we've said, really hasn't had to be someone that's that scored a ton for them this year. You know, he contributes in a lot of other ways. But, man, they, they absolutely needed that from him. I think that was his, or what, his season high. But that's the most minutes he's played in the game, I want to say, since early January, perhaps. Um, so, big game from him. And that was, you know, huge. Stanley Amude hit some big shots. And, yeah, I mean, it's it's just – look, this was – I know that was what we kept saying. Like, the Arkansas was the popular upset pick coming in for a second year in a row. Uh, I know Muss had some fun with that after the game. But we still got to remember, outside of just that that game against A&M, which was just, you know – it was an A&M team, I think, that was just getting hot and playing really well. This is still an Arkansas team that over the past two months now has just been really, really good. And so, yeah, you, you kind of felt like, and it was one too where I was thinking for the longest time, like, hey, they better put Vermont away. They better not let them hang around. But eventually they did that. And I just thought it's it's a good win because, again, Vermont, that's not a that's a, that's a quality basketball team. And, you know, it was not ever going to be easy with this, with the way they played Ryan Davis and, and those guys, but yeah, give Arkansas credit that they, they get the win. And as we'll talk about in an upcoming video, now they get, uh, you know, the 12th seed versus uh, instead of UConn. So there you go. Well, Arkansas also had four of its best five players in with four fouls. So I think, think you really got to be feeling good if you're Arkansas leaving this one, the way that you wanted all the things that went against you, Note not being a factor, the foul trouble, um, you know, one place they did get bailed out a little bit was 
Vermont was 10 to 17 at the foul line, which is very uncharacteristic. Uh, Arkansas was 20 to 25, which we mentioned. That's kind of a way that they win. You know, the threes didn't fall, but right at the season average, 7 to 21. Yeah, I mean, I, I just – I watched them, Blake, and I feel like it's a lot like last year, except that, like, I feel that they, they go more – I don't know, years fade, but it seems like Arkansas has got four or five guys that any night can be really good, and that, that seems like a little more than they had a year ago. It's probably not, but I just like the way – and we've talked about it recently that – Umude, I think, was the most underappreciated player in the league. All these Tony was probably not far behind him. I mean, we talk about Williams and, and Note a lot, but it just was, again, a case of those other guys really stepping up, uh, w- which has really been the difference in their last two months. Yeah, I mean, both guys play 40 minutes. What, what else can you ask for? It's yeah. not, you, can't, you can't afford to take those guys off the floor, and that, that says something. So, yeah, just, uh, you know, I think a good win for, for Arkansas. We said it was a – you know, I don't say it maybe not the, the toughest draw, but it was a still a tough draw, I think, just for trying to – that first-round game, which, again, you know, as Kentucky learned firsthand, that first-round game can be as tricky as any other just because it is. You know, there's so much pressure when you're the higher seed. You got everyone talking about how you're, you know, about to be upset and everybody's picking Vermont, and it's just kind of one of those where I think Arkansas can, can use that as motivation. And like I said, now it gets – I don't want to say an easy game by any means because I think New Mexico State was clearly the better team against UConn, but um, that'll be a fun sort of style, stylistic type game there uh, between those two teams in the next round because, um, you know, that's a that's a good coach on the other side that, quite frankly, Arkansas may be seeing again uh, regularly over the next however many years if Chris Jans becomes the next coach at Mississippi State. But, um, yeah, so we will – We'll see about that. But, yeah, nice win for Arkansas. I, I thought it was, again, it was not going to be easy, but uh, that they found a way to pull it out. Yeah, hold that thought for just a minute because I have a comment there. You can wager on sports and win NFTs without risking any money. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, it's not because of Stakes, which is the wagering app that's casual, social, made for all sports fans. Whether it's by yourself or with friends, experience the thrill of sports betting without needing to worry about losing your hard-earned money. Sign up, use our code SOUTHEASTERN14 to join the thousands of other sports fans playing with Stakes. Download that in the App Store at Stakes. By the way, I had a a buddy that signed on to Stakes yesterday. He said, this is really cool. I said, I've been trying to tell you guys. We're doing little prop bets and some cool things in there, and again, it, it costs you nothing. So, well, one of the things I bet on yesterday in stakes was the one and two seeds were all going to survive. And oh. Well, I didn't get that one right. So, um, we'll do previews in a different video, but that top half of the West, where you got Gonzaga against Memphis, New Mexico State against Arkansas. I think those have the potential to just be wildly entertaining games. Yeah. No, I mean, that's – quite honestly, I think that's it's kind of the matchups we a lot of people expected. I mean, I, I told you when we were talking about UConn, I said there's a very wide range of outcomes for UConn in this tournament. And one of those did include, you know, losing in the first game. So, um, yeah, I think that – if it was just now, and you look at it from a matchup standpoint, look if the good Memphis shows up, I don't, I don't know about Memphis being disciplined enough for 40 minutes to beat Gonzaga. That would be my only concern there. But if the the good Memphis shows up, then for, for that for a 40 minute game, it will be a game. But as we saw against Georgia State, um, which I know people were talking about officiating and that kind of stuff, but when Gonzaga wants to hit that that button and turn it on and, and flip it to the next gear, they can do it very quickly. So. That would be a good one. And, and, yeah, I mean, Arkansas, New Mexico State, I think you look at, you know, what, again, what they did yesterday against a UConn team. You know how they're going to play um, just, you know, because of, of Hurley and, and just how he wants them to play. But Teddy Allen, fantastic. So, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. Allen and Note, if those two are matched up, that'll be that'll be entertaining. It's going to be a good one. Uh, Tennessee, Michigan, quick thoughts. Michigan didn't look great for the first half yesterday. Yeah, we'll talk about it. I I think that that's still a favorable matchup for Tennessee. I just, I think Michigan, again, we have to, I think, keep it to where Dickerson, I mean, 
you know, he's going to be just because the size, mm. I think that, you know, he, he's going to be someone that I think you're going to have to look at. I mean, Dickinson's just, he's a, he's a strong physical type player and that may challenge Tennessee a little bit in terms of maybe them getting to the rim. But again, with just the three point shooting and how well they've been playing, um, I, I tell you, I just, I just, I mean, well, we'll get, we'll get to our picks, but I think you know where I'm leaning right now, just based on uh, what I think about how this team's playing. So, all right, parting thoughts. No, we got, uh, of course, watch our videos for the Friday games. We'll see if all three SEC teams advance. They're all three favorites to do so. But uh, as we we've said, Auburn, everyone, be on, you know, upset alert because the NCAA tournament has officially started. And if you uh, were not aware. Just check the results on what was a wild Thursday. Just going beyond, I mean, you know, staying up late last night watching that that Murray State San Francisco game, a tremendous game, overtime games all over the place. Just uh, what a Thursday it was. So, all right, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, and again, plenty more content coming up. Uh, remember, we do cover baseball too. So if you like that, uh, you're gonna have a lot of baseball coverage here. Anyway. I'm Chris Lee. He's Blake Global. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.